Sherry Berger. They have just held the Deb Ball at Nimbin. Three local girls present themselves for initiation to Police Superintendent Clout of Lismore. A stylized ritual with the sweet vibrations of country culture. Not a thousand miles away come the vibrations of something else, the alternative sound of hippies and dropouts. Uh, change must take place no matter where one lives. The time moves on and uh, uh, this uh, hippie movement, is, uh, as, you, as you call it, uh, we call it the Aquarius movement, has come to Nimbin and uh, they've selected that they want to do their thing here. The signs point away from local values and traditions. The festival's an exercise in rejecting the uptight social order. It's been characterised as Australia's Woodstock. The 1973 Aquarius Festival shaped Australia's alternative lifestyle movement. With a reputation for drugs, communes and free living, Nimbin has long been the home of Australia's counterculture. In many ways, it started 50 years ago with the Aquarius Festival. In the early 1970s, a group of Sydney University students were keen to create an Australian version of Woodstock, a counterculture festival that celebrated art, sustainability, harmony and freedom. Their search for a suitable site landed them in Nimbin, a once conservative town folded in rolling green hills and rainforest in northern New South Wales. So what you're saying then, that these counterculture people really are threatening your way of life in some way? That would be, yes. <clears throat> and you're fearful for the future? That's right, yes. As far as hygiene goes, they don't know the meaning of the word. While locals were sceptical at first, many came around to the idea of the festival. Were you at all worried about them at the beginning? Yes, I was. And what made you change your mind? Just seeing new kids. It had to happen because people are getting sick of city life. And uh, ten years ago, if you came down to the city, they looked upon you as a little bit of a hick. But now it's turned out that I think we've got the answer, the way to live. What do you think of the festival? Great, really great, really great. Has it upset your life at all? Not at all, not at all. And what do you think of all the people that are up here for it? Really great people, beautiful people, beautiful people. The festival brought an assortment of characters to town. Graham Dunstan has been there from the beginning. I don't know how to judge the success of the festival. The festival is so many things and so many different people. Um, if we survive, in the sense, if it works in such a way that we don't pollute the creek, uh, we don't have major out outbreaks of diseases, we don't have fights and those sorts of things, if it comes together a community, which, which, the, which is the feeling in the town right now, it's really soft and gentle, and you go down and sit at someone's campfire and talk to them, they're very open, sort of thing. And well, that's what it's about, you know, that we can do things without having to have entrepreneurs to tell us how to do it. We don't have to have barbed wire. We looked around and we ended up doing it in Nimbin. You know, with, with hindsight, I can now say that um, at the time we thought the hippies had found Nimbin. But the longer we got to know Nimbin, we knew that we were on ancient initiation ground. And the hippies were called here. We were called to Nimbin. We talked about Nimbin magic. There was a serendipity about things, that when we wanted something, you know, someone go to the store and get something, you know, in Lismore to the hardware store and get something or other, it would like happen. Someone would turn up with it, go, oh, I just bought this thinking you might need it. Yeah. 
how does it exist? How do you divide labour and things like that? Oh, well, everyone's sort of just socially aware enough to, you know, just do something when it needs being done, like food and everything. If you feel like cooking, you just go in and make a salad and someone else comes along and joins you. The best way to live here, if you come here and try and live by yourself, get up your own tent, build your own fire, get your own water, uh, it's a heavy scene. If you do it with a group of people, it's a light scene. And that's really the lesson that the whole of the thing is teaching all of it. There was a lot of things that were very... Um even unusual then, like doing regular exercise, like eating well, eating organically, all of those things were kind of unheard of. Certainly being vegetarian or anything like that, that was a bit out there. Um, and food co-ops, all of that was very... It was just starting up then, where people came together to do things in a collective manner. As hundreds make the pilgrimage to celebrate the 50th anniversary of a festival hailed as the birthplace of the counterculture movement in Australia, a key question remains. Has the dream of the Nimbin Aquarius Festival been realised half a century on? Uh, the secrets are there around the place. Yeah. They're the same brand. I've got to have moved like it out. But... Pot's been a part of the inspiration and part of the awakening. Nimbin has become the home of the legalised cannabis movement in Australia. The political party achieved its first election win in New South Wales, with Jeremy Buckingham entering state parliament this year. Um, we've got to change the driving laws as a, as a total priority and then people need to be allowed to grow their own instead of paying expensively through a doctor. Historians say it's hard to quantify the extent to which the first Nimbin Aquarius Festival may have influenced Australian culture. But it certainly had a big impact on the region, including respect for the Gondwana rainforests of northern New South Wales and the recognition of First Nations people. While the causes have evolved, to people here, the meaning of Aquarius remains as relevant as ever. Forests, women, home birth, mining, these, these, are, these were the issues back then and they're still the issues now. Totally radical. We do everything for the first time. Everything we touched was kind of for the first time.